Yes, hello. I'm here um, tonight to look at a message that I believe the Holy Spirit is um, directing me to talk about and to share. And just in confirmation, I um, believe that uh, it's very important to be listening to God, be listening to the Holy Spirit and letting the, the Holy Spirit... So just before I uh, open in prayer and before we start um, this sermon tonight, I just want to pray... Lord Jesus, I just allow the Holy Spirit to touch people's hearts tonight. I let this be God's words, not my words, Lord. Allow your message to come through me. Allow the vessel, to me, to be a vessel, to be open vessel. Allow people's hearts to be touched. Allow people to examine the scriptures, to examine their hearts, Lord. Just allow the Holy Spirit to a minister and touched people as they listen to this message, Lord. Lord, let this be a message from you and I let the power of the Holy Spirit unleash let the power of the Holy Spirit be unleashed as we, we talk about this sermon tonight and we allow God's words through me to radiate throughout people's lives. And Lord, that we encourage people to read the Bible. We encourage people as we look at the sermon tonight and we're looking at John the Baptist, Lord, that we've got to turn away from our sins and, and turn turn away from our sins and turn towards God to actually turn towards God and as we do this sermon tonight Lord it's about John the Baptist and it's about what John the Baptist was preaching and Lord as 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 John the Baptist was paring away for Jesus to come into this world and as now we have the opportunity to prepare the way with the Holy Spirit with the power of the Holy Spirit we can prepare the way for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to come back the second coming and Lord, that we just allow the mighty Holy Spirit just to allow God's words to th th flow through me, Lord. To allow God's words to flow, flow through me. To allow me to be an open vessel to God. And to allow the words of God just to flow through me. And to allow it to touch people's hearts tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. To get into my message tonight, we're going to be talking about... Um, John the Baptist prepares a way for the coming of this of of God's Son. So John the Baptist is preparing a way for Jesus. So we look at if we can all turn our Bibles to Luke three, and we're going to start off with Luke three verses one, and we're going to go right through to verses four to start with. And I just want to read this. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judah, Herod Tiarch of Galilee and his brother Philip of Tiarch of Atura and Traconinus and Lysanias Tiarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Ananus and Cathares, the word of the God came to John, son of Zachariah in in the desert. He went in order the countries around the Jordan preaching and baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. As is written in the book of the word of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, and the rough ways smooth. So I've actually read from uh, verses 1 through to verses 5 there of John, Luke 3. Now, as it was saying in, in Luke 3, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, we can see that um, in, in, in the second part of... Um, in, in in verses 2 <coughs> we can see that during the high priesthood of Annas and Cathias the word of the God came to John son of Zechariah in the desert so the word of God came to John while he was in the desert so the word of God came to John the son of Zechariah in the desert. Isn't it so strange? Excuse me. 
isn't it so strange that the word of God comes to comes to you in some very strange ways the word of God and the Holy Spirit comes to you in strange ways just like John was in the desert and the word of God came to John Zachariah in the desert and obviously when John was John was in the desert and the word of God came to him it was about preparing a way for Jesus and as I get further into this I, I want to get further into this now is that we see that if we look back at uh, verses 3 and 4 in verses 3 it says he went into all the countries around Jordan preaching and baptism and the repentance of forgiveness of sin And in verses 4, as this is written in the book of the word of Isaiah, the prophet, a voice calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight paths for him. If we look at verses, so we see John preaching and baptisms of repentance and forgiveness of sin. But John was seeing this as having two sides. So the two sides that we see here is firstly turning away from sins and turning towards God. So what is John saying turning away from sins? So what is John saying about turning away from sins? Repentance has two sides as John says. Turning away from sins and turning towards God to be truly repentant must do both. We can't just say we believe and then live any way we choose to. Because John clearly says that we've got to clearly repent and truly repent. And church, if, if you think, well... It's cool to be involved in this church. It's cool to be coming to church. It's cool to have this, this uh, social activity. Well, there's lots of social clubs in the world that you could be doing that. At the end of the day, if you're going to be part of God's church and God's army, then you've truly got to repent. You can't have it both ways. It's either one way, one way which is Jesus' way, one way to Jesus Christ, or the other way is towards the world. We can't just say we believe and then, then we live another, another way we choose. And we see that in Luke 3, verses 7 and 8. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptised by him, You brood of vipers, you warned you, who warned you? So in, in Luke 3, verses 7, John says to the crowd coming out to baptise baptize by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming rough? Produce the fruits in keeping with repentance, and not begin to say to yourself, We have Abraham our father. And in, For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children of Abraham. And in verses 9 it goes on to say, The axe is already at the roots of the tree, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So it's very easy for us to say, and this is where John was preaching, because John, the son of Zechariah, was in the desert. And we see that the, 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 the word of God came to John in the desert. And the message that was given to John was to prepare a way for Jesus. So he was obedient. He was obedient and he responded obediently. He listened to the words and he was responded obedient to the directions of the word of God. And he started to prepare a way for Jesus. So John was not saying just turn away from your sins John was talking about truly repentance we have to do it both we can't have it both ways we have to do it by re truly repenting and truly turning from our sins and turning towards God turning from our sins and then 
turning from our sins, turning from the things of the world, and turning towards God. So we see that in John's ministry, he was preparing a way for Jesus. At whatever cost, at whatever cost. Now, if we go on to Luke 3, verses 4 and 5, we can see that, as is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, the voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough way smooth. And in obviously verse 6 it goes on to say, And all mankind will see God's salvation. But then we see that all man will see God's salvation. But obviously John said in verses 7, John said to the crowds coming out John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming of wrath produce the fruits in keeping with repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves we have Abraham as our father because what he's referring here is Abraham is not their father God is their father in in heaven and if they truly truly want to repent the truly wanting to have repentance and we and they they want to believe and accept the lord accept the baptism repentance has two sides turning away from the sin turning towards god to be truly repentant we must do them both we can't do one and not the other so in other words you know if if you're in a church and you're in a revival meeting and you are in that revival meeting and people are saying come out the front and give your life to Jesus Christ but truly there's one thing that is forgotten and this is what John the Baptist was saying there are two sides to this repentance has two sides turning away from the sin and turning towards God to be truly repentance we must do both we cannot just say we believe then we then live anyway we choose and it goes on to say that in, in, in Luke 3 verses 7, John said to the crowds coming to be baptised by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming rough? If you truly want to repent, you truly want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you wouldn't go to Jesus just because you can't handle the fire and you can't handle the rough. So you're saying, well, you know, it's much more comfortable to just to go over this side. Um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll accept Jesus Christ in my life and I'll turn away from my sins, but I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to acknowledge God and I'm not going to turn towards Jesus. I'm not going to turn towards God I'm just going to go along with the charade and this is what this is what John was talking about you brood of vipers and as he was talking to this crowd obviously he was talking to all sorts of different people there and suddenly out of out of this Jesus had turned up and wanted to be baptized and Jesus had walked in the water Jesus had walked into the water and he would have known. So if we go now to Luke 3 verses 11 to 14. We see here in verses 11 to 14, John answered the man with two... 11 to 14... John answered the man with two tunics, Should you share them with who has none, and the one who has food should do the same. The tax collector also came to be baptised. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than what you require to. He told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money, exhort money, and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay I'm going to leave it there I'm going to go to chapter 2 of this just in a minute 
And I'm going to just get a bit more in further into John's ministry and, and what John was talking about repentance and the two-sided things about, about that...